from space. We are here to talk about the Star Wars franchise's illegitimate child, Rebel Moon Part 1, Child of Fire. It's not the Star Wars movie you deserve. It's the Star Wars movie you need. So we're getting ready to watch uh, Rebel Moon Part 2 because it comes out next weekend, The Scar Giver. So before we do that, we thought we'd talk through Part 1 together because there's a lot of lore to keep track of. Throw some questions in the comments if you have them. We'll talk about them. So um, I broke the plot summary up into three segments. So we're going to hit it a chunk at a time. There will be spoilers. So if you haven't seen this movie yet, beware. Okay, so let's get into the plot. Uh, before we do that, did you guys know this was originally pitched as a dark Star Wars movie? I did. Zack Snyder wanted did. to yeah, direct this as an official Star Wars franchise movie. Yeah, he was trying to pitch this off as a, one of those what they call the uh, like the anthology films, the side films. Mm -hmm. And honestly, like knowing that going in and watching this last night, I can totally see <laughs> like where he made oh, yeah. a few changes to make it not Star Wars, but not it was quite. still it was still Star Wars. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I am curious for everybody uh, in the comments. You guys can answer this, but do you think Disney should have taken this movie on as a Star Wars film? Or do you think it was right of them to pass on it? I think they'd made the right decision on passing. Okay. I think they made the wrong decision on passing, but I'm kind of glad they have did. a show down here. Okay. Yeah, because I don't know if it would have been what it was, like as dark and and gritty if it were an official Star Wars movie. And I, I did kind of like the darkness, but Man, when they pulled out stuff that looked like blasters and light, like lightsabers, I was like, "Oh, are they going to get sued for this?" <laughs> yeah, that one, the one lady, she ignited her two blades, and they were red. And I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> yeah," but they were blades first, so they were just heated blades that she could have turned on like five minutes earlier and killed that spider in like two <laughs> seconds, but giant drama, spider. drama. There's only so many things you can do to innovate a sword, right? Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, I mean, I, the, the reason I think they did a right job of passing on it is in, in me being a, a the Star Wars nerd that I am. Um, yeah, I mentioned about Ghostbusters. I'm protective of these films. Like, I, I want them done the right way. I don't want a rated R Star Wars movie. I, as much as I'd love to see a Sam Jackson Mace Windu <laughs> with him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I don't star Wars has always been, I mean, I like the dark and grittier stuff. I love Andor. Andor is very dark, very gritty, not necessarily for children, but at the same time, there's a certain, um, I don't know. There's certain rules that you have to follow, you know, mm -hmm. uh, swearing, um, you know, sex and stuff like that. That's not in star Wars. And that's just kind of like, is this movie. It, I like this film but I'm glad that it wasn't a star Wars film. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. I, I, I was definitely I mean, was down only... for our rated okay. star Wars. Um, well, this was, but I see PG what you mean though. I mean, oh, this, really? Yeah. Well, the movie, I mean, I think I, I heard him say, I don't know, two, I mean, and these are words you actually hear on TV as well after 9 PM or 10 PM or whatever, you know, there were no F bombs. There was no nudity. Yeah. Um, well, like I said, and, and look, he's he's not writing a Star Wars movie anymore. So mm -hmm. he Correct. can, you know, so like I, I like, yeah. you know, I like what he did. But again, it's just, it's one of those things. I'm, I'm like I said, I'm not fighting for it. I'm, I'm glad Disney didn't take it because I think the story would have been different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now he, he is releasing a director's cut, a rated yes. R director's cut. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I heard. I that. would like to see that. So yeah. that's what I'm saying. He probably had all that stuff in, and that's when they're like, "Nah." <laughs> um, but, um, and I know that they said like you know that the movie was probably too long. And that's why it's into two parts because he didn't want to cut any of the, um, you know, any of the story down. And that may be another reason Disney's like, "Well, we're we can't do that. We're not going to put two of these out." So, but I mean, I don't know. I just. I think it was better that it was a standalone do its own thing than it is. Cause he can make it the way he wants to make it that way. Um, the sad yeah. thing is so. I, uh, 
I watched uh, the Joe Rogan episode that he was on, and they talked about this, and I oh. don't remember a bit about it. You know, oh, <laughs> I was like, I'll watch this or listen to this podcast, and I I think well, I listen to it while I'm at work, so it's just I'm catching a little bit here and there and working and which is not good if I'm doing research. <laughs> it was kind of in the vein of Rogue One, but if you turned it up to 11, the intensity, yeah. I thought. Hmm. Okay, I mean, well. Yeah, like, like I said, you know, it, it. there were a couple, you know, crew, or, you know, the whole pig guy who was hitting on her friend and, you know, reaches down and grabs him. Yeah, you wouldn't see that probably in a um, Star Wars movie, but you know, the grittiness, I mean, episode two, all they did was chop everyone's head off the entire movie. <laughs> I mean, how many decapitations were there in episodes one through three? They love that was the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's like. If it's a droid, it probably doesn't count, right? <clears throat> and, you know, that's kind of what they did with this movie, too. Making it PG or PG-13 was, you know, you saw the burn marks go through people but you never saw holes you never saw blood you know a little bit of blood on people but it wasn't like you saw you mm -hmm. know stuff like that so you know it could very well um have been a star wars movie but again i i don't know i'm not going to get deep into that but it's funny how the I'm dark they tone yeah it's funny how the dark tone made me in hindsight like remember it as r because when you said it's PG-13, I'm like, oh, it was? Because it just, it looks like a heavier movie than its rating suggests. So, Well, wait until the rated R version, because yeah, uh, I don't know, Nathan, if you even know what this is, but Drew, you remember Heavy Metal, the mm -hmm. cartoon? I've heard of it. Movie? Are you, okay, yeah. That is what he uh, the rated R version is. Oh, is really? A heavy metal movie style okay. movie. But okay. there's going to be plenty of. Uh, I don't know about nudity or anything, but it is very, you know, there's a lot more crudeness. I, I think, believe I remember a lot more swearing, a lot mm -hmm. more gore, you know. So when mm -hmm. you see the laser blast in slow motion and that's all you see, maybe in this one there, maybe they don't have lasers. Maybe these are actual, you know, guns and you see a lot more blood and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. it'll be interesting do you know when that comes out by the way i have not heard okay i don't know if there's a release date for it i just know that he's planning on releasing a director's cut of this movie so yeah. I, I as for release date i have no idea okay well uh let's jump into the plot i'm gonna read just the first act basically and then we'll talk about it before we move on to the next act and so on so segment one of the plot rebel moon the dark cosmic child of every space opera you know starts off as Star Wars's melodramatic cousin. Korra has been living under the radar on the planet Velt when Atticus Noble, Admiral of the Imperium, arrives wanting to buy a surplus of grain. So basically we're in like a game of Age of Empires or Starcraft. <laughs> One villager replies that the village barely has enough food to survive. So Noble kills him, then tells the village He'll return to collect the grain in 10 weeks. And I guess if that happens, the village won't have enough grain to survive. So they'll starve. So Cora recognizes Noble. She knows he works for the Imperium, how cruel he is. And she knows that when he returns, he's probably going to massacre the village. So they start preparing to defend themselves. So kind of an underlying theme of this movie is power. Like what do people do with their power? And uh, how did how did you see this this first act? Uh, were, were you into this or was it kind of a slow grind to get going? I was having fun with it. I mean, yeah, you I know? think you did a really good job of like world building right there. You're kind of getting to know these characters and who they are and what they do. Yeah, you got to establish so, the good guys. And yeah. Um, so, yeah, you can't just break right into action. You know, you got to introduce mm -hmm. this character and this character and why, you know, what's her motivation to do what she does. And then here comes the bad guys. And so, uh, so yeah, I, I, I thought it ran pretty smooth. Yeah. I, I found it intriguing. 
I thought it was a little bit slow, but it, it was about the pace of a Snyder movie. I mean, you know, Justice League, the director's cut, that's probably the last Zack Snyder movie I watched. And it mm -hmm. kind of felt like that. But the, the more we got into it, when Noble shows up, uh, I, I wasn't sure what was going to happen. There was some good suspense there. Um, I wanted to ask you about our, our lead character, Cora. She's kind of an intriguing character. Uh, what did you like about her? Was she intriguing? What made her a good uh, character, a hero to follow through the story? Um, well, I mean, I, I like the actress, <laughs> you know, everything she's been in. I mean, I haven't seen a ton of her stuff, but uh, the things I do know her from like Star Trek and the Kingsman movies like that. Um, I really liked her and I thought she did fine here. Yeah. Um, just, I was very surprised when you told me she was from uh, Star Trek because I'd seen that and I, I didn't recognize her from that part movie. Three. It was yeah. part three, right? Well, yeah. she was painted bright white and yeah. had markings all over. Her, and if you didn't know who she was, then oh, I didn't know that was her. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I had no idea. Same one. Oh, well, I, I, well, I, I think what makes her kind of also intriguing is the beginning. You know, when they're they're debating on what do we tell them about this harvest? You know, the ship is coming in and they're having like their little, you know, village meeting about tell them we don't have anything and no, we should tell them we have something. And she's the one who's stepping up saying, look, this is what we need to do. You know, you could tell that she's had like some kind of a history with these people, but you don't know exactly what it is. So that, that kind of sparks your, your interest a little bit. And then she shows up in a barn and annihilates five soldiers who are about to assault you know one of her friends and you're like that really makes that interest like what is this lady's backstory yeah. she, she's supposed to be a farmer how does she know how to fight like this you know and then later on you find out that she used to you know she was raised to be a soldier so um i think that's what kind of makes her compelling mm -hmm. is that she um you know well you know nowhere, she has some kind of secret yeah yeah you know there's some there's more to her than what is, you know, and what she's letting on. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they set up pretty good mystery. Yeah. 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 And I, I kind of like these tortured soul characters. Like when you see somebody who clearly has some kind of trauma, but they're still trying to be a hero. I kind of like seeing how are they going to work through that trauma? Cause they're going to be pushed to do things that maybe they normally wouldn't do because they're, they're battling these inner demons. I kind of like that in a character. Um, but I mean, you could kind of contrast her with Noble. So he has power because of his position. And he comes in there and he's going to take all their grain and stuff. But she could easily like take over this village if she wanted to. But she chooses not to use her power that way. She's just living silently among them. And so I thought that was kind of an interesting contrast. Like yeah. one who's at the top of the totem pole and another character who basically, you know, could kill everybody who <laughs> opposed her. But but she just kind of wants to be normal. Maybe she's, mm -hmm. I don't know, thinking of others. Well, she's kind of a fugitive. Yeah. I mean, she she, she basically is. defected, so she can't really. You know, she's got to keep that a secret. She can't just come out and say hey i used to work for this and i did do that and yeah i'm wanted so you know she just has to blend in and of course mm -hmm. the minute that she pulls out a gun and starts kicking everybody's tail uh the secret's out so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> i am gonna say one thing though and you know sometimes they do this in movies uh they've been kind of shifting a little bit away from it and else but she is too invincible yeah, she never got hurt. I mean, game, yeah, she? you know, I mean, like when she uh when they're doing oh, we haven't got to that part yet, but yeah, you know, when <laughs> she know was fighting about. these uh five five guys at the beginning, I mean they're sitting there with automatic weapons just unloading towards her and nothing is hitting her. Mm -hmm. Um she, you know, they get one or two punches in, but then she's like boom, 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 pop, 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 taking on three guys. And meanwhile, the other guys are shooting at her and nothing's hitting her. It's like okay. You know, the action was cool and she, she, you know, she's very athletic and I know she can kick the crap out of me in real life. I'm not saying this from a girl guy thing. What I'm saying is that 
she was hardly touched <laughs> the entire fight. And then, you know, we'll talk about it yeah. even more later. That, and, and even if it was a guy doing this, you know, it's just like, I don't know, you know. I it's mean, hard to buy it when she's yeah, that like, good. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, Jack Reacher, a uh, show that's out right now. I and mean, he gets his butt kick constantly <laughs> through th that show and getting stabbed and getting shot and you know hurting and everything that dude is six foot four and 270 pounds of muscle and so you know that's that feels a little bit more realistic where when movies do this where it's just people walk through five six ten twenty people you know it's that's why I'm not a huge fan of John Wick. I hate to say, I mean, he, he does take his bumps, but man, he just goes through so many people so easily. Uh, yeah, so yeah. I, that they're fun to watch, but it kind of takes me out of the movie a little right. bit as well. It hurts the realism but, a little bit. Yeah. You know, um, unless it, you, you look at it as a cheesy movie or something like that, where you can kind of look past it, you know, if you want to be more realistic, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I thought they made her way too strong. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I I can roll with it in a gritty film because like when I watch a movie, I I kind of want to see like the, this world's kind of messed up, you know, I kind of mm -hmm. want to see um, heroes or people do things or survive things that that we can't survive here. And so there's there's a piece of me that resonates with that if it's done well in a film. But yeah, at the same time, you want to see realistic movies, too. Now, I, I didn't mind it coming into this because I know what Zack Snyder does. I mean, all of his films are kind of like this. So mm -hmm. I, I guess I, mean, I lowered I, I didn't have that expectation from him in this film. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even Superman got beat up in justice league yeah yeah um you know so it's just like yeah and again well, she's like basically said, supergirl it's pretty close yeah <laughs> having an invincible hero does kind you of take know on out of it a little bit you you go okay. into these movies knowing that the good guys are gonna win right mm -hmm. you know nobody wants to i mean they're just, they would just trash a movie where you go through all this and then the bad guys win Oh, yeah, I hate that. <laughs> you know, everyone hates those movies. So you know where this is going. So you don't have, you know, make her amazing. I mean, you know, I have no problem with her taking on five guys. And yeah, the the other guy helped um, a little bit and everything. But, you know, make it tougher. <laughs> yeah, I guess. And then, like I said, and I'm not just talking about this scene. This happens multiple times throughout the movie. The yeah, that second one that you're referring to, the flashback. Um, not in the flashback. Uh, I'm referring to the flashback, but oh, I, I'm thinking of the cantina Barson. scene. Yeah, yeah um, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. But that's another example of these guys open fire and they do the <laughs> slow motion, and it's just <laughs> like right around her. It's like stormtrooper syndrome. Seriously, it's like she's wide open. How bad of a shot are you? We're in the Matrix, man. <laughs> yeah, but she's not moving. It's she's the not bullet. moving. She's just sitting still. <laughs> That's the key. They, they expect you to dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. And you, you just stay put. It's like a video game where you get shot at a billion times and you never die, but you blow everybody else away, right? right. Yeah, pretty it's like much. It's like watching a video game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and again, I'm not saying it's bad. Yeah. It just that kind of stuff kind of takes me yeah. out of the movie a little bit, just because like okay, I get that. you know, I mean, now if if they come back in part two and it's like, oh, she's birthed from the nano people of the Cyperian universe, and they have the goal power of the sword symbol, and that gives her Wonder the strength Woman? of Wonder Kron, and uh, that's how she does it. Then that makes sense. Oh, all of so that. Zack Snyder sense. just continued doing Wonder Woman in space. That's what this is. Maybe. Wonder Woman with a lightsaber and a blaster. <laughs> but but yeah. So I like the um, setup. Again, that's my little rant. I don't want like I don't. Yeah. I really really enjoyed the movie. I did. So 
I'll, I'll I liked her as a that. character too. Oh, a hundred percent. I love with yeah. her too. I mean, she's beautiful and she can, you know, it's like, you know, the first time I remember seeing her was Kingsman and uh, she was amazing in that doing all those martial arts moves and stuff. It was just really cool. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's a good character. Um, I gotta say, I forgot some of the other characters faces after it had been a few days since I watched it, but mm -hmm. like, she has an iconic look that oh, I yeah. think she stands out as a character who could move forward through a, a, the trilogy or a series. But I, I like these tortured characters that mm -hmm. are wrestling with some kind of trauma, but they're mm -hmm. still trying to be good. They're still trying to be heroes. Right. So I, I think there was a little bit of relatability there. Um, besides, you know, not being able to, we can't survive all the bullets or lasers that mm -hmm. she got hit with. So, okay, so the, the threat is coming back, right? The Imperium was going to come back for the grain in 10 weeks, and they I leave behind... The weeks or months? 10 weeks. Oh, I thought weeks. it was months yeah. for some reason. Yeah, so kind of quick turnaround. Yeah, must have that. Yeah, they, <laughs> they, they leave behind this evil platoon, and Jimmy the Robot, who apparently is voiced by Anthony Hopkins. I had yes. no idea. Oh yeah, yeah, you could you could pick that out. Yeah, I totally missed it. I oh, I heard it like so the opening, instead of a title crawl like Star Wars does, it was a voiceover, and it was that was a weird it. voiceover. It was, and that but that was Anthony Hopkins that, doing the voiceover. But was that yeah. him at yep. the beginning too? Yeah, that's why I first heard that. It's like I didn't know he was in this. Because huh. um, yeah, it was. And it wasn't a weird start. It was just like for the way this movie felt throughout having that gruffy voice to do the, you know, it almost seems like you needed a, you know, the normal, you know, the years, her, her, I can't do it. Drew, Drew make a low voice sound. <laughs> yeah. Blah, blah, there, that kind of that one. In um, a world. Something like that. Somewhere. Maybe not that cheesy. In space. But, you know, um, Somewhere in space. But yeah. You, you with got, lightsabers. With, yeah. But apparently it's Anthony Hopkins kind of talking like this. And let me tell you about this story. And it was just like, wow, that's that's an interesting take. <laughs> the way they the way he did that, because it was like, that's not the voice I would have expected. But yeah, yeah maybe, maybe that was what threw me off at the beginning, because, uh, you know, I'm kind of the jury's out for me on Zack Snyder movies. I only watched BVS once. And I'm the biggest Batman fan ever. So I, I was intrigued by this movie from what I'd seen, but I wasn't sure if I was going to like it or not. So like the movie starts and I'm not sure what movie I'm in, but 20 minutes in, I'm like, oh, I think I like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, I had the exact same feeling. It was that opening voiceover. It was just mm -hmm. like it almost, you know, it sounds like uh, I can. Uh, you know, if somebody were doing the voiceover for Ice Pirates or something like that, Ice Pirates. you know, it's it's the kind of voiceover you, you know, the voiceover for Dodgeball or something. Yeah, you know, it had that feel to it. And it was just like, oh, felt, I don't know. Felt like was, it's from a different movie. Felt like it was more a, yeah. a voiceover for a comedy movie. Yeah. It was kind of light. Okay. Very, mm -hmm. very light. Yeah. You need that more serious, you know baritone voice or whatever but yeah that'd have been great opening for starship troopers that's what you know yeah something way over the top and cheesy all right here let me tell you about this asteroid that hit this place and bugs are <laughs> this place well i i liked the robot i thought he was cool yeah it, it was very, an interesting twist <laughs> yeah because yeah, instead part. of the the robot being evil so he He's from the enemy, programmed by the enemy, and he develops empathy because he sees Korra and the villagers being mistreated. And he's kind of mistreated by the platoon that's left. Well, he was so, programmed to save the or protect the king. And since the yeah. king's been slain, now they're just. His programming's gone. They well, shut it's not it down. Gone. They said they just shut it down. Yeah, like but the mm. robots themselves shut it down. Hmm. Yeah, because they have no more. So now they're basically just slaves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Robotic slaves. And uh, but they are AI, which 
goes into my future. Uh, how I'm going to end this, but, uh, you know, so they can learn and, you know, you could almost see the way it walked around the way it just sat there. It, it wasn't happy. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm not doing my programming. So when that girl talked to it, I think it triggered something and all of a sudden Johnny five's alive. So. A robot that has, has feelings. That's kind of in a cool. way. I mean, it kind of had like an attachment to, to her or there's like someone else that she can, you know, that he can protect. Now he's got, meaning instead of just loading boxes and getting true on. yeah you know because his broke you know if you look at it that way his programming was protect protect you know mm -hmm. these two people that's my job protect the king and queen and uh you know he failed at it or it failed at it and so now it meets this girl and it's like she was nice to me didn't have to be blah 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 I should protect her like I did before. And like you said, it almost, you know, I have, a, I have a something to do in life again. You know, I have <laughs> a point, I have a purpose. So it, he even, the, the robot even said to, um, you know, our main character, Cora, that you remind me of the princess. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, no, he, he, he didn't say that to Cora. He said that to the young girl. Who was giving the water? Oh, that's right. That's right. You remind me of her. So then she's getting attacked, and um, you know, he his, his that was, programming. <laughs> that was a him. very cool kill. Yeah. <laughs> him just sitting there looking. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Headshot. Yeah, the the idea of a robot like needing purpose and looking for it. I mean, that, that's something cool that I haven't necessarily seen in a movie. I mean, we, we've seen robots become self-aware, but like needing meaning in life is like a distinct human characteristic. So uh, applying that to a robot or a, an animal or something, that, that's yeah, kind of cool. It's that, like that, a reverse that, that six. Skynet, like anti-Skynet. No. Yeah. No? Short circuit. <laughs> Short circuit. Well, they also did that with Star Trek. Oh, okay. Data. Amanda Data is an android who wants to be oh, a human. Oh, so Star but... Trek ripped off Short Circuit. Makes sense. E yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Came Next out Generation came out two years after Short Circuit, so yeah. yes. But it's an okay. android who wants more. He wants to become human. He has no feelings, but he tries. And so it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's kind of the same. Or the, you know, like the Orville. <laughs> You know, right? Yeah, yeah. The droid on the Orville who's trying to learn human functionality, and mm -hmm. it was hilarious, by the way. Yeah. Well, since we're on kind of this subject, I'll throw this question up there. Do you think this movie borrowed too much from other films, or do you think it came off more as a tribute? It's. I think you should talk. Go ahead, Dick. No, I was going to say. I think. At, I think with um, this genre, you're doing a space. You know, you're doing a space saga or whatever, you know, whatever you want to call that. It, it's a uh, it's kind of hard to come up with something truly original. <clears throat> like you're going to have some of the same things. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's you're what going I'm... to look for inspiration yeah. from other things of that genre. I mean, Star Wars borrowed from Flash Gordon and Seven um, Samurai. Yeah. Yeah. What, uh, what was it? Seven Samurai. The Seven Samurai. Yeah. Um, so it, it borrowed from that. Um, Star yeah. Trek then borrowed from Star Wars when it came for its movie. So, I mean, everything kind of, you have to borrow a little bit. And keep in mind that we've been making movies now for over a hundred years. So, you know, by the time the fifties and sixties hit, we were getting new movies every week. Mm -hmm. And then by the seventies and the eighties, we're getting three or four movies, I mean, three movies every week, three new movies. By the time the nineties hit and blockbuster was hitting big. I mean, we were getting 25 movies a week going to DVD and then, you know, another three or four in the theaters, maybe not that many, but you know, six going to DVD four in the theaters. And, you know, now, I mean, I can't even imagine how many movies have been made. So, <laughs> You, you, unless somebody, I mean, 
you look at movies like Avatar, that is Dances with Wolves. With Blue. Oh, yeah. 100% Dance with Wolves. That's that's yeah. all that movie was. Mm -hmm. It was still a good movie. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to, you know, say it's a bad movie, but, you know, that's pretty much the same thing. But I wouldn't say it stole the idea. I think it just, it's a common idea for people to change their minds and do this and do that. So when this movie took from where it took and did what it did, um, I don't think it was stealing from anything. I think actually it really kind of changed things around a little bit and did some things that surprised me that mm -hmm. I was like, Oh, well, this is going to happen. Oh no. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I got, I got surprised some too, but from the first half, I wasn't sure if I would. So I was pleasantly surprised, but I won't tell you what surprised me yet. We'll have to get there. <clears throat> so we should, well, I guess before we go on, I, I did notice all the weapons looked so much like Star Wars for a while that I was like, wow, I'm surprised they got away with this. But then I knew Zack Snyder was trying to pitch a Star Wars movie so I could see it. But I, I do feel by the end of it, if it, it feels different enough that it's its own thing to me. I mean, it didn't bother me. I, I like what we got. So I uh, Personally, I think it feels a little bit more like uh, Firefly than Star Wars. Oh, yeah. which I haven't or seen yet. Serenity. Um, uh, it's, Doug's it's, it's exactly right. It's a space western almost. Yeah. Uh, okay. You know, I mean, Star Wars kind of started there, you know, with Tatooine and, you know, going to the jungle then after that. But once they introduced Coruscant and um Naboo or yeah and all these other planets with this weird technology and weird looking stuff then it's like okay it's no longer just a space western where um Serenity and uh the TV show Firefly it that's what it was you know you were flying I mean they were literally at some points taking cows from one system to another and um you know a lot of uh you know no not very few laser guns everything was um pistols and shotguns and stuff like that so i know they put in a few more lasers here and you did have some of those outposts that were a little bit different but you know it wasn't pretty you know it wasn't mm -hmm. you know like you know especially now when they're doing movies like uh um I'm like, you know, what planet did they blow up in episode four? Alderaan. <laughs> Alderaan. Alderaan, yeah. You know, when you saw Alderaan in the uh, Obi-Wan TV show, I mean, it's just, nice just shiny, beautiful, shiny. Yeah, you weren't seeing that in this movie. This is yeah. like, this is the start of humans kind of getting out there. They haven't really become, you know, owners of the universe, like we're the owners of the planet right now. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. so, I, it's still the old west out there right and i like that in mm, some good. of these films i love the dirty the gritty uh not everything looks brand new like it just came off the factory floor it looks like it's been used and worn and people live here and um that's like my biggest issue with like you know the star wars prequels is everything is so shiny and nice i like the dirty and the gritty so um <laughs> Yeah, Doug, you're exactly right. This is very much like Firefly. You know, they ride animals to get to where they got to go. And, you know, um, they're dirty. They look like farmers, which is what they're, they're supposed farmers. to be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I mean, like they, more, yeah. they didn't show up wearing brand new shirts and nice and clean. And so, um, yeah, very, it was well, yeah. it was, that was very well done that way. But again, like Doug said, you got to borrow from something though. So you just, look for inspiration and ideas and then try to make them your own. Mm -hmm. Change a few things, erase that name, put this name, do this and that. And yeah, get your own movie. Well, this, this will be a good segue into uh, the next part of the plot because in star Wars, right? Darth Vader blows up princess Leia's planet Alderaan. Something very similar happened in this movie. So basically we have justice league in space because Cora and Gunner, leave the planet in search of some other warriors to fight for Velt. And then we begin a darker version of Infinity War because on their road trip, Korra spills to Gunner that 
she's actually Gamora from Guardians of the Galaxy, basically. She's <laughs> actually an Imperial Imperium Army vet renamed Arthalaeus by Balisarius, who not only wiped out her whole family, but also destroyed her home planet for good measure. So basically mm -hmm. the template here is Infinity War or A New Hope. And Korra became the bodyguard for Princess... How do you say this? Issa? Issa? Sounds... I can't remember what it said. Something like we'll that. just go with that, yeah. Yeah, Issa. <laughs> but um, this princess was expected to end the conquests of the Imperium. She was the but, chosen one. Yeah, but on her coronation, she was assassinated, and then Balisarius came into power. So now we've got this scenario where he's going around continuing the terror that the Imperium is causing, like sending Noble out to these planets to take their resources and things like that. So yeah, we, we've seen some of this before, but this feels a little bit different. They, it, they still keep, in my opinion, that uh, World War II feel, World War I that Star Wars had. I mean, they, they designed the Imperial Guards and um, some of the generals after Nazi soldiers, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I kind of got that kind of vibe off of Noble, too. So you could see some... It's Star Wars influence, but it's like real life history influence at the same time. Yeah, I chuckled a little bit at the very beginning when they were going over the this is what's happening. And he senses, you know, the Imperium was a senator and he declared himself basically emperor. And I'm like, OK, so that dude's Palpatine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then he sends his best warrior out. Oh, so that dude's Vader. And he destroyed this planet and they, everything on it. Oh, so that was Alderaan. And I mean, this is this is how I started. I'm thinking. Yeah. Me too. He's, he's just ripping off Star Wars this whole time. <laughs> Obviously, he changed it, made it a better story. But the way it started off, I was like, "Oh my god, what are we walking out here?" Um, yeah. But yeah, the the general shows up, and he's wearing basically Nazi style. Yeah, uniform, well, yeah Nazi which is show. what, which is what. Uh, I mean, George Lucas based some of the helmets of his Imperial officers after uh, World War II. You know, German soldiers. So they kind of borrowed from that also, but I guess it's because, you know, the 1942 Germans are just the worst enemy ever. So yeah, you really can't get worse than that. Can't, so you might as well just use them for it's the hard influence. To, yeah. I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> well, like George Lucas's thing. generation. I mean, that was, a. I don't, I guess I don't know when he was born, but I mean, world war two was a huge, probably traumatic he event for anyone 40s. living through it. Say late forties, early fifties. Yeah. That's latest so, i mean like the atomic bomb inspired japan to make godzilla movies to kind of bring their fear of nuclear war into a character so you know maybe that's what some of these writers do Th their fear of world war three they they write it into a space opera it's kind of a way to personify it and deal with it in a way i think true. it's cool true yeah, in, in this, what I call the, the Justice League segment, where they're going around finding all the teammates. Now, this this part, I started to kind of like zone out a little bit because I've, I've seen Zack Snyder movies before. I know what they're doing. They're putting the team together. I wasn't crazy about this middle part. It, it wasn't bad, but it didn't hold my attention the way the beginning and the end do. But it... it you know, you got to put the team together, I guess. Is there a better way to do this than what they did? Or, I mean, no, unless you just want to say all of a sudden, like, we got our team together. I mm -hmm. think you just show up and everyone's on the ship. You don't want to do that. You have, I escaped yeah. somehow. Let's go. You don't <laughs> want one exactly of those. where my mind went. <laughs> you don't want one of those. Um, uh, so you had to show how they, I, I don't know if they mm -hmm. necessarily needed to have them, um, each of them have their own 10 minute scene. Mm -hmm. Like, couldn't they just a couple of them just been together? You know, like yeah, the lady yeah. goes in to kill the spider lady. This is cool, but yeah, that that part was weird. Yeah, well, yeah, because <laughs> first, I mean, I get what she was doing, but why did everyone else just walk in, just stand there? <laughs> I mean, they, they they had guns. Yeah, I, I get it. The girl, yeah, I get it. That you know, it was holding that little girl, but as soon as. The little girls dropped weapons out. 
lightsabers on, start swinging, start shooting. That thing is dead in five seconds and you move on. <laughs> but it was just a weird, I mean, and I get cool you want to showcase though. this character. Yeah. No, who that's didn't probably do what they're anything doing. the rest of the movie, by the way, I forgot she was in it. <laughs> I, th I think it oh, there's still couple... another movie coming though. Yeah. I, th I think they showed a couple, you know, at the final fight, I think she might have killed one person, but um, yeah. but yeah, that was just weird to me that you know now if yeah, one quick change, a 30 second scene where it's you know, you make this spider noble and it's like I'm gonna kill this baby, but uh I will give you the chance to defend her, but only you can fight me. And you know, you say that and then go into it, yeah, it's a little bit cheesy, but the movie's a little bit cheesy, so go with it. You know, mm -hmm. so you that would have made that a lot better. It just was weird that they just all stood there. And it's like, we need <laughs> this person to help, but we'll wait until she slays this big spider by herself and she may die. And oh, yeah, maybe they wanted to see if she was actually a good enough fighter to fight for their cause or something. I don't know. I mean, like, OK, let's see what she can do. This is like we're going to have tryouts to quote the Joker. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I say when they were recruiting everybody and they're getting a the gang together, I felt like I was watching in like a D and D movie, like Dungeons and Dragons. Oh yeah, because you had you had a cyborg sword master, uh, a warrior, a mercenary, um, I think like a bounty hunter, uh, someone who can tame animals. <laughs> yeah, very, like, very Native American vibe. Yeah, like, boys, uh, you know, they hit, they they hit all the races pretty well. Like everything um, had them all, so it felt like they were about to go on a Dungeons and Dragons quest. That was you got that, everybody. Uh, that that's you that's a very cool analogy. I, I hadn't even thought about that, but yeah, that's what it was. You <laughs> you were putting together a D and D squad. Yeah, Dungeons you know, and you, Dragons in space. You were yeah. genius. Every single one of those people in your Dungeons and Dragons group. The only thing they didn't have was like a wizard. Yeah, you but you know, you, do magic. instead of wiz, you know, there's no magic in that world. So, you know, you got the technology person. Okay. Yeah. The cyborg person would be, yeah. Yeah. Or so yeah, I, so they were recruiting all that. I'm like, this is like D and D in space. It is. Yeah. I don't know what does and doesn't exist in this movie after the end scene, <laughs> but we'll get there. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, if you guys have a favorite character, throw them in the comments and, and tell us why you thought they were cool. Um, Let's move on to the third act. Or anything else you wanted to cover on the second act here? Oh, let me think. Let me think. Uh, well, I was uh, glad to see Charlie Hunnan in it. He's I, the guy I who up over him. Cantina. Kai. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that dude's cool. Everything he's in, he's just cool. <laughs> you know. So uh, I was because uh, I, I didn't know anything about this movie, so I, I didn't look up who was in it or anything like that. I was like, I'm going to go into this raw. So when he showed up, I was like, oh, there's an act, you know, a, a fairly noticeable actor. Because, you know, other than um, Sophia, I always mess up her name, but, but, but Bautula or however you say her name, I apologize. You know, other Bautula? than her. Yeah, it's something like that. It's it. I, I, I'm sure. In in greek uh, what's that <laughs> that means virgin in greek or hebrew oh really I, okay. I yeah <laughs> I, and i'm probably pronouncing it wrong again my apologies but other than her i didn't recognize anyone until um uh what's his name the baddie came in you know that's the uh that's ajax from uh deadpool so i kind of recognized him but it wasn't like there were these big names and it's like this seems like a pretty decent sized movie. You almost want to get some names in there. And then they did the flashback with Carrie always. Um, yeah. That's which was cool. To see him in it. Yeah, that, that was a good cameo. But then Charlie Hunnan shows up and it's like, okay, there we go. We're starting to see some people come up and everything, um, which was kind of cool. Um, and again, I'm pointing out the uh, invincible thing again, when she's uh, talking to, uh, her friend uh, Gunner uh, around the fire and telling her, telling him her story. You know, that was another part where she, you know, her husband had just died. So she picks up the gun 
And she's like, come on. And she runs up and hides. And then all her people get killed. And then she turns around and just sprints at the bad guys. And then she wins. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That's... And it's like, again, you, you, there was that slow motion, you know, scene, which was amazing where everyone's getting shot. Robots are falling apart. People are dying. And then she runs around that corner and just runs into the blaze. Everyone's dead. She took on everyone else, maybe, <laughs> you know, and then she's up there with the flag, which again was a very cool scene, but again, too invincible. Mm hmm. Too invincible. I I was almost shocked at how much slow mo was actually used in the fights. Like I wanted to go back through and count because I am expecting it to be like fifty times throughout the movie, maybe more. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me anymore because like every action film has a slow mo. If someone's hit and they're falling. 50? It's a slow mo, or it's a guy. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I personally I don't like the slow mo. Just I like the slow mo now. You know, it's uh, you can and I mean, you can do it with your phones now, too, but it's it's very, very fluid. You know, we grew up watching movies like, you know, Lethal Weapon. You know, I I, I remember Lethal Weapon 2, where the last scene where he's got the gun up and, you know, shoots the guy and uh, um, mur the cop murders the guy who has diplomatic <laughs> immunity. 80s love it um and you know he's like he shoots and in slow motion and then if you can see my you know his hand comes down he's like yeah you know very slow motion <laughs> and that was bad and then you know the big car you know it's blurry when it's going in slow motion and everything like that i love this new slow motion i mean you see everything it's just very smooth and um and two it makes it easier for fight scenes because sometimes it's you know it's hard to fight like jackie chan and jet lee you know when yeah. you have these people and and again sophia she's she's an excellent you know she's very uh athletic so she can do that kind of stuff but can she do it at the speed they needed to do it to make it look good and nobody gets really, really hurt. Mm -hmm. So if you do this and it's just like, okay, let's do this three quarter speed. Let's just be smooth, get through it. Nobody gets hurt. And then you bring that down with that cool slow motion. Now you got a really cool scene. Yeah. I just sometimes think that it's overdone. Like, well, I'll give you that. Yeah, that is, it's like, it's so yes, to your point, it looks a lot better than it used to when it's like someone gets punched and like, and they got to fall off a, a boat into the water and it's slow motion. Hmm. Like they would Dukes of hazard used to throw it in all the time. There's TV shows and yeah, but it was, scenes. you know, it was still it's, blurry. It was, it was bad. Choppy. It was just, yeah, but, it, was, it was the best it could be for the time. And right. We loved it. But yeah, but I, I don't need a whole bunch of them in a movie. Like not mm -hmm. every fight scene, I think needs to be a slow motion. Mm -hmm fight scene but like, two it's a lot easier with cgi i'm guessing as well yeah well probably. because you know it's like that scene uh in the uh, guardians of galaxy 3 where it was all one shot but you know it was like sped up and slowed down and sped up and slowed yeah down, that was cool you know and that's kind of you know there was a lot of cgi in this it looked fun you know it wasn't as good as dune but they probably didn't have the budget that dune had yeah. so it looked um, it looked pretty darn good for yeah like you said I mean, you know a streaming movie I think it was a limited theater release but it mm -hmm. looked like it cost a lot of money mm -hmm. so I was surprised at you know what they were able to do with I mean I can't imagine it had a huge budget just because you're well, you're I'm mainly going to screening out. and you know a the graphics were good but they weren't amazing it's not going to win mm -hmm. any uh awards for its special effects but i was so, happy with it and what's that oh yeah I no i was with happy it. with it yeah. too i was happy with it too but you know it had you know similar again similar uh effects as um firefly and serenity okay and you know we're talking 20 years apart almost on that mm -hmm. maybe this so I think it's easier to do these, those types of special effects, especially nowadays, you know, yeah. what we can do with 
AI alone, as, you know, as amateurs, if people know what they're doing with the uh, CGI stuff, they can knock that out. Probably fairly decent. Yeah. So this movie shared a budget with part two. Yeah. Makes sense. It, 166 million. Yeah. That's so, really high for a streaming movie. Yeah, wow. For two, for two, two million. Yeah. For two movies for streaming, 166. So, so and total. I guarantee they probably shot these. Did they shoot these back to back? Oh, I'm sure they did. Yeah. Cause. Cause I mean, when, when, when did Rebel Moon really, come out? The, this first one, they just released this in the one. fall. Yeah, fall. Yeah, so they shot it back to back. Um, and like I said, it was originally supposed to be one movie. So, yeah, you just throw it all in there. So, I mean, yeah, for 166 million for all this, that's it's not bad. Pretty good. Yeah. Well, let's go into part three then, because at the end, you know, Doug's favorite actor here, the guy who plays Kai, Kai is going to turn out to be a. Uh, a mole basically he's trying to make some money so he turns in the team to the the imperium noble shows up and cora is about to be paralyzed when gunner ends up shooting kai right did i get that right did i remember that right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you skipped over a handful of stuff but um but <laughs> But now we've got the final yeah, battle that's... scene, so we can talk about that, right? Right. Yeah, we're here. Okay, so they get captured, and we're at this point. Um, that that was one of the big what moments of the movie. Not that Charlie Hunting character uh, Kai that Kai turned on him. I, I mm -hmm. pretty much imagined that he was going to turn on him right as they met him. You know, he's got he the Irish. Guy? Yeah. No, I mean. Not always, but yeah, sometimes, most of the time, too. Um, but, you know, that was the character. You know, he's got the Irish, he, you know, I'm here to help you and all, all that. I, yeah. So, you know, you had to imagine, okay, he's a thief. He's kind of a drifter. He's going to try to make some money. But I was expecting the normal... Um, the normal thing you get when somebody goes for the money, they get the money and they leave and they're happy. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, that was wrong. And then part two, he uses that money to free him or something like that. And it's like, I'm sorry, let's do this again. And no, the, <laughs> nope. the useless guy that's been in the movie from part one turns around to did <laughs> it was like holy crap yeah i, I was not early. expecting that <laughs> and uh you know at first i was like no and i was like all right that was kind of cool <laughs> that, that was i was not expecting that you were expecting you know i think 99 percent of the people were expecting the criminal with a heart of gold and he'll he'll make amends and no he's dead <laughs> yeah they tricked me too i thought and you know okay was, this guy's the Han Solo of the bunch, basically. Kind you know, of. He's dead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but other, than, other than Anthony Hopkins and, you know, maybe uh, Digimon Husson. I always mess up his name. I'm sorry. Uh, Titus, the guy who plays Titus. I mean, Charlie Hunnan is the most popular character or actor out on this roster of people. You know, I mean, he, he starred in multiple movies. He's you know, uh, what was the, I haven't, I haven't watched this yet, but I know I'm going to get made fun of for it. The motorcycle, uh, show, um, one second ghost rider. No, no, it's a, uh, oh, son, oh, sons of anarchy, sons of, sons of anarchy. You know, oh, he was yeah. the main character in that he was King Arthur. Um, you know, a lot of people don't like it and you know, it was a little bit cheesy, but you know, he was in Pacific Rim. He was the main character of that. Um, oh, I didn't even recognize him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else? You know, he's been in a bunch of stuff. Uh, he was in, I, I remember back when um, he was a part of uh, the undeclared TV show. Um, he seemed like somebody uh, who was going to be around for a while. It was like Judd Apatow, Judd Apatow's first TV show called undeclared. It was about a college uh, group. Uh, Seth, uh, Seth Rogen was in it and, a lot of the same people who are in all of his movies. Um, 
but yeah, that's the first time I remember seeing him and I was like, ah, he seems kind of cool. <laughs> so, but yeah, um, I, I didn't expect, I, I thought he was going to be around for a while. So yeah, I, that's, I enjoy that's... being surprised by movies. Like mm -hmm. when they pull a fast one on me and surprise me with a plot, like I, I get more into the film. So when the third act came in this movie, I was like, oh, <laughs> like, well, now I'm like, I'm appreciating this movie even more because I didn't see that coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that was pretty cool. And then and then, yeah, things things went crazy from there. Did you enjoy this final battle? I did not enjoy it. Oh, OK. I, I was Again, pretty it, it was. Yeah, it was cool, but it was at the same point. I don't know, man. She's too you invincible. Know? Is that it there, again? Well, all right. So first of all, somebody the should have died. The escape. Someone should have died. And a couple of them did, or one of them did, or something. But or the escape was the weird thing. Okay, so he turns around and he shoots uh, Kai, and then somehow hits the one button that releases uh Sophia <coughs> or the main character whose name I'm blanking on right this second but um you know Laura. she does a bunch of stuff and releases somebody else uh release uh releases the assassin or the spider fighter and then um so yeah Mrs. is that her name um what was her name Nemesis. Nemes Nemesis. He releases Nemesis, and then Nemesis has her solards all of a sudden. And then she runs over and frees the other two. Meanwhile, there are two guys standing, two of the enemies standing right next to the two people she released. And you know, she releases um, Darian Bloodaxe, and then he jumps off, and he's literally standing in front of the guy who's shooting. He, you know, he, this guy's shooting here, he's standing right here. And then he runs up and, and it's like nobody thought to go bang. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like stormtroopers. They can't shoot straight. I guess I did just perfect. I'm you got to, like, you got to adopt that from Star here? Wars too. How did they all <laughs> in the matter of five seconds, there's 10 guys standing around them. You know, the one guy you uh, trusted is now dead. You want the rest of these guys dead. Open fire. All 70 of you. And then it's over. But mm -hmm. it's just like they're all sitting there like, oh, they killed Kai. Oh, they let her go. What what do you what do? We do? What do we do? Stop, stop. Oh, they oh, I'm dead. And it's like, <laughs> whoa. <I'm dead. laughs> that could have gone a little bit better. Yeah. So maybe the fight chore choreography could have been better then. I just want the escape. Okay. Yeah, the, to start things off, I want the escape to okay. be different. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'll we'll, we'll go from there, and then I'll tell you again a few other things that seemed a little bit weird, but we'll go from it. Um, how about you guys? What'd you think? <laughs> I'm gonna rail on. This I can't. I can't top that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let you keep going because <laughs> I think you're on. I know. I it was very abrupt. The the everybody getting out was way too simple. Mm -hmm. Um. The fight scenes, I mean, the fight scenes are, are very cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, you again, know, I I'm mean, not they're very cool, but I I see what Doug is saying. It, yeah, it, it does it seem just like rushed. So first off, yeah, they escape a little bit weird. All right. You know what? We're, we're in the fight. Like, I'm, I'm just going to if you guys want to say anything, let me know. Go for but, it. Um, Take it. So uh, when that ship comes around the corner. And it's taking out the. uh uh, blood axes, uh, ships and everything. All right. So that guy is in a gunner seat. All right. He's in a turret. He's sitting there. You see the turret. He's pointing at him. He's shooting at them. Okay. So you get later into the fight and, uh, blood axe runs up the crane and jumps in, sacrifices, sacrifices himself. You know, it was a great scene, a great death for a warrior. That was cool. Mm -hmm. And then he reaches down and hits something. And then the ship crashes. Now, anybody who's played any space video game in the world realizes that if you're in a turret seat, you do not control the ship. 
<laughs> he's and you know this because shooting you played them. space games. And no, then I, he I, dies, and then the guy goes down and hits something, and then the ship starts turning yeah. and crashes. And it's like, what's the pilot doing? There was there was never an instance, even in airplanes, that the guy in the gunner seat in any way, shape, or form has the power to take a his own plane down with a button. Yeah. The designers are just not gonna put that there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why, why would a turret guy need a self-destruct button or something like that? So uh, that, again, that was like, oh, what? Did, uh. But again, I love my space maybe games, it's, so. Maybe it's the version of, like, the cyanide tooth that when a spy gets caught, they they break that tooth and it poisons them. You see that in James Bond movies. Maybe that's what that button is in the turret seat in this movie yeah oh it, we lost like our the, left the turret seat. let's blow abandon ship, ship. <laughs> yeah that doesn't make blow it's it not even abandon ship let's just wreck it <laughs> i mean it was our like, gunner <laughs> we gotta take Come it on. down <laughs> we gotta take it down <laughs> and we're gonna oh, die but... doing that and then yeah that last <laughs> sequence when that ship crashes i don't understand that whole sequence i mean that's a that's a pretty big ship. All right. I mean, it took down a very large bridge. I mean, that ship could easily hold hundreds of people in it. And it's coming down. And, you know, first of all, um, Atticus is just standing there looking at it like, oh, well, the ship's about to. OK, I'm on the end of a bridge. When the ship hits, I'm going to fall wherever down goes. Uh oh. Guess I'll stand here for a little bit, and then um, Cora goes running in, does the sliding thing. Pretty cool, I like it. But she slid under to the part where they should have died. I mean, as that ship's going down, you see him, and I'd just be like, "Bye, you're dead now." <laughs> but yeah, oh, but then... she wanted revenge. It seems yeah, right, but like she wanted to be the one to twist the knife because she, because he took out her family right is that why because i i got the impression guess, that she didn't necessarily expect to make it out of this fight she just happened to survive it maybe but yeah when a big ship takes out a bridge they fell fairly easily well he fell mm. fairly easily i don't even know what happened to her she slid under the ship hits he falls down onto some buoy or something like that and then all of a sudden she's just up there like ninja and being a ninja up there. It's like, Hey, I made it too. And she had a gun. What happened to her gun? <laughs> Why did she just stand up there and be like, now I'm going to shoot you in the head. Pew. I just, I don't know. It, it seemed kind of clunky to me personally, mm -hmm. but again, this is a PG 13 version of a rated R movie, which probably has a lot more story to it. So that's what I'm interested in seeing. Hopefully they add to the story yeah. and they're not just adding on, you know, boom, boobs and F-bombs. Yeah. And that will be released mid 2024. Yeah. That's why I was saying. Yeah. I so heard this summer. A couple months probably. Okay. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. So, yeah, I, that's why I want to, I don't want to completely say this was you know i hated this last scene there were a lot of cool scenes the sacrifice was great you know the surprise of that ship coming out and taking all of the blood axes out that was interesting um i don't think they gave the justice league if you will each their individual cool scenes there maybe yeah. the fight scene could have been longer and you know i you know you got general titus which I love the name, by the way. Um, he, we should have seen him being a general. I don't need to see Gladiator show up. If he's a general, yeah. he should be very, very, you know. Now, if he's powerful too, you know, that's cool. Uh, Maximus was that way. But I need to see his intelligence. No, all he's been walking around is just, I'm Conan. A black Conan, um, you know, it's like it's pretty much all it is. And, yeah. you know, I want to see I want to see the general come out. Um, I want to see Nemesis really take on a handful of guys. I think she, you know, it showed a quick scene of her 
well, she she freed the uh, two guys that were standing next to the four bad guys. Um, and then maybe she stabbed one or two bad guys during that little fight. But again, you didn't see her mm -hmm. really step up again. You know, there's no way this would have worked as one movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, I didn't feel like I knew the other characters very well at all. All I knew was the betraying guy who's dead and Cora and Gunner. And I guess that's okay because there's a whole nother movie, but I would have almost rather they didn't go from planet to planet to pick all these people up at individual different places. Um, and instead they found them all somewhere so that we could spend a little bit more time getting to know them as individual characters. I think I would have preferred it that way. But yes. I, I was happy uh, w when the movie was over. I mean, I enjoyed this final fight because, I mean, I, I loved seeing what I, I consider to be dark Star Wars on steroids. And now I'm thinking, man, anytime I see a Star Wars film, I'm going to want to envision it with this grainy, dirty filter on it and like feel the explosions in the way you kind of felt them in this movie and in, in the recent Dune movie, when, when we saw those ships, like the gunner ships, like shooting things, I mean, you feel it and it's scary. That That is something I loved about this film. It's like an Elseworlds Star Wars movie. And I, I liked that. Mm -hmm. well, you should but watch yes, Andor because that's what you get in Andor. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. And that's I, why I liked Rogue One. That's why I love yeah. that movie. Yeah. The one of the things is when you're introducing a lot of characters, it's like this is going to be a two-parter. Yeah. So there, there's a problem when you're introducing too many characters in the first movie. It is hard to get to know every single one of them. Um, yeah. I was just about to say maybe keep a couple for the second half. You may almost yeah. want to go three movies with this story because yeah. You well, are, I saw him mention that you know, today. You, I, I you, saw you him need that it. Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every, I think, you know, it's hard to tell an epic story in two movies because, you know, you, it's hard to end the first movie on a downer because people don't like downers. That's why episode four ended with the Death Star blowing up and them getting the medals and everything like that. And then you bring in the empire strikes back and crush their souls. And then that's how you get back up. I mean, we, we kind of ended this movie on a, where, wh what happens next? It's almost like a, Round two. a bad cliffhanger. You know, they think they've won. Now we see this bad guy. It might be a robot. I'll get into that. Um, is brought back to life. And he talks to somebody else and, a different world through telepath telepathy it's or the dad of uh Cora. Like her, yeah her dad, of course dad we're back in star wars Cora, so is he in heaven I am now? Your prisoner. yeah is he like one with the force now i mean so that is what i wanted to talk about because see i i found that intriguing uh when we see balisarius um talking to noble on the astral plane i mean they they said they had to keep noble alive or they had just long enough to have this meeting happen and then they could bring him back but if if he died like they could lose him there so i took it like like he, his spirit is like in between worlds and they could run out of time and he could actually die so this is like I don't know where this is. It's like an in-between worlds thing. Just now, the idea that they would bring a spiritual yeah. dimension into a space opera is really interesting to me. I don't know how this is going to work because he died, but he's hooked up to Wait. a machine and now he's on a different plane. Does he get to go back into his body and relive again? Or Yes. All right, time it, it, it's almost like life support. Okay, you tell me your theory because you've, you've no, no, thought no about No theory this. here. We got to start over because... The guy that he goes to see is not Cora's dad. That is the guy who is the leader of this group that killed her parents and then picks her up as a little girl. He was the one who took the gun. Oh, he was the one who raised, neck. 
Okay, so he's in the Thanos role. <laughs> yeah, he's like he's raised, like Thanos. He raised her. He raised okay. her, but it's not her biological father. Okay, okay. So I don't think this guy's dead. When um, Max, I keep saying Maximus Atticus is talking to him. Um, they're keeping him alive, but they're yeah. close to losing him. Maybe. That's why I thought it was like some kind of waiting room before you, before your spirit goes to a more permanent place. It, it's like a waiting room. Yeah. But I think well, they called it the astral plane, didn't they? Because in the lore online, they call it the astral plane. Oh, yeah. That may be what they call it, but <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. My, I was just trying again, to read up and find out. My, my crazy it. theory or my mind went after I ended this movie was that the farmers are not fighting 100% humans. Now, the soldiers that they killed at the beginning, yes, those were humans. And I would think that most of the evil army are humans. But I think the upper echelon, I think it's AI. Because you saw when Atticus, you know, they brought his body, they took his arm off, they plugged something in him. They were taking out fluids, putting new fluids in. I think he met, um, what was the main guy, uh, Balisarius, in a chat room somewhere while his That's body was being plane. repaired. I think the astral plane is literally a chat room. And these these guys are AI using the greed and anger of humans to kill humans completely. So he's using the, uh, uh, remind what's the name of the bad group? Atticus noble Imperium the Imperium. The Imperium. Yeah. I think the Imperium is ruled by AI and they're using humans to kill other humans. And, as that's happening, their humans are getting killed off too, which they're fine with because they want to take over the entire universe. Okay. So Balisarius, is he an AI in this theory? I think he is. And that's why when he walked up to that little girl and took that gun and put it to his neck, he knew the gun was empty because he's a robot and he could read, oh, no more bullets in that one. But I'm going to make a point. <laughs> You know, huh. maybe that's how he knew that's an interesting theory. And, you know, because again, you know, he's when I mean, what he fell off that buoy thing. You know, if it's a true human, he should be dead. But they took off his arm. They put in something. In, they sucked out a bunch of fluid, put in, you know, happy fluid, you know, or whatever. And yeah. More so blood, and now he's back blood. to life and he's fine. So I think they just repaired him. I think the, you know, when they were pulling his body up, those what kind of look like people in masks, I think we're going to find out that those are more androids than anything else because they had mm. very robotic moving as they were putting them down too. So I think that's a twist that we might see or you could at least throw out to be a possibility mm -hmm. because um, now that's interesting. Yeah. That's how I, think what is the astral plane i think it's a chat room hmm. that wow. avatars can meet and speak together with in person although they are galaxies apart mm -hmm. yeah I, I don't know what it is i i think that's an interesting theory when i first watched it i thought it was some kind of like not exactly purgatory but before his spirit goes on to a, a permanent place. I, I took it. We're somewhere in the spiritual realm. And this Balisarius character is sort of like some kind of God. Cause I mm -hmm. couldn't figure out like, how did he get to that plane without having been almost killed? I mean, maybe he can astral project or uh, maybe he, he has the power to kind of walk between these two worlds. Um, or I could see, Maybe it is a spiritual dimension, but they can use technology to get to it, which would be an interesting twist because nobody's ever really done that before that I can think of. <clears throat> so I, I don't know. 
I, I didn't understand this last scene, but I was intrigued I, and I wanted to see more. I'm like, oh, I want to see part two right now because I want to solve this mystery and figure out what was happening here. So to me, this cliffhanger kind of worked uh, for you guys. I guess it didn't it didn't work as well. I mean, it's not bad. It's weird. Yeah, it's just it's weird. Yeah, like like you said, it's hard to tell an amazing story, which this seems to be an amazing story. Again, I, I am I'm ripping on it a little bit here and there, but I am going to tell you, I highly recommend the movie. It was fun. It was a good movie. There is an interesting story there that, yeah, it takes from, you know, a few things here and there. But I think Netflix should have given them more money and had faith that the story was going to be good and given them enough to do three movies instead of two. Yeah. Personally, I think Disney made an error and not taking this and making this a cool because, I mean, they need a cool. They need something different. The Star Wars, you mean? Yeah, I wouldn't even make it. I mean, well, Disney could have made it man, this yeah. movie, just not Star Wars, but okay, put okay. it out under the Disney brand. Like, well, even if they made it Star Wars again, I'm not saying you, you know, he he's making this his own now. So, yeah, he's adding some more swearing. He's making the Ray AR version. But if you take that just the story and put that into the Star Wars universe, it works mm, at yeah. least. Unless it is an, a whole AI thing, then I don't know how that would fit in the Star Wars. And maybe that's why maybe that's why they turned it down because it's like you know what that's cool, but we don't have AI in Star Wars. Mm. We, I mean, technically they do the robots, but I guess we'll find know, out next weekend, right? That's true. Yeah, yeah. in a few days. So uh, but, I like that uh, theory. That's kind of intriguing. Yeah, it just that's, it kind of hit me at the end because it's like again they just a human is dead when that happens. I mean, basically he got crushed by a ship, fell off a platform onto another platform, got the crap kicked out of him, got shot, fell off and then landed X amount of feet below him. Mm -hmm. A human is dead. He's obviously not a human. So I'm going to say AI robot, just like Jimmy. And that's why he kind of popped up there at the end. And it's like, eh, he's starting to, oh. you know, he's, he, he may be like the, you know, the AI that is like, okay, this doesn't make sense to me. Why are the AI doing this? I don't like this. We're going to have AI wars next. Maybe. I could I be we'll way wrong. Out. I'm just kind of throwing my mm -hmm. ideas out there. Well, we are going to watch um part two this weekend and a week from today uh, on monday we will go live at the same time 8 30 p.m central time to talk about part two together so it's if you guys want to uh oh yeah 9 30 eastern <laughs> so if you guys want to watch part two uh before next monday and hop in the chat with us and uh, throw your thoughts out there we'll talk about them so before we wrap up here we already know uh, Doug, you recommend this film. What about you, Drew? I did. Do you recommend this movie? Because you, as the Star Wars fan, I didn't know what you would, which way you would go on this. Because I know you don't like the slower epics as much. So, what do you think? Oh, you lost your mic. I think Drew. It says you're muted. Just hit. Oh, here we go. Oh, Wait. his mouse died. All right. Drew says, go ahead and say what you're saying. I can read lips. He says he loves the Cubs. Strum, thumbs up. He Big thumbs Chicago up. Cub fan. That's right. I'm a Chicago <laughs> fan. Yes, I love the Chicago Cubs. And you know it. You know it. See, I, I read lips perfectly. Oh, that's so, great. Uh, anyway, he definitely recommends the movie. Yes. So I believe I saw a thumbs up there. You recommend it. I did too. I liked it. And I, I, as I said, Every time I watch Star Wars now, I'm going to be like, oh, I want this to be a little darker. But I recommend it. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. So thank you guys. Watching in this quickly before he gets his mic up. <laughs>